A fierce power struggle between Algeria's president and its military is heating up over corruption scandal rocking the country's biggest energy firm. Is the scandal politically motivated? Who will have the upper hand? And what does it all mean for this North African nation? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hod Abdel Hamid. The CEO of Algeria's most profitable company has been suspended and is being investigated for corruption. Mohamed Mezian is the chief executive of the state-owned oil company Sonatrak. Some other senior management have also been suspended and observers are saying the move could have crippling consequences on the Algerian economy. The allegations are over how some contracts have been awarded to the company's suppliers. The case is being handled by the powerful Department of Military Intelligence. Some say the military have been unhappy with President Bouteflika's increasing hold on power. Some reports suggest that this investigation could be the military's attempt to regain some of its influence on Algerian affairs. Sonatrak's oil and gas production is continuing, but the government has said the impact of the investigation on both the company and Algeria won't be known for at least a year. So why is the company so integral to the country's well-being? Sonatrak is the largest Algerian and African company. The country is a leading member of OPEC and through Sonatrak is the third oil and gas supplier to Europe. The company is vital to the Algerian economy. Not only does it employ around 120,000 workers, it produces 30% of the country's gross national product. And it accounts for 98% of foreign currency brought into Algeria. Well, joining our discussion today, in Paris, journalist and political commentator Akram Belkaid. In Los Angeles, Hamoud Salhi, professor of political science at California State University. And on the line from Algeria, we are joined by Ismail Debesh, professor of political science at Algiers University and a leading member of the National Liberation Front. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Ismail Debesh, who, was given, who has given the green light for the investigation to go ahead and why now? I think the, the green line is, uh, is the president's uh, ca election campaign last year. That one of his main objectives for, for the next five years is to bring an end to corruption and misuse of... Uh, uh, and the bureaucracy and misuse of uh, uh, public funds. So well, this is the green line. So it is, according to you, it is the president uh, who who did ask for this investigation to go ahead. He did ask for any misuse and any irregularities concerning the Algerian economy. It happens only why it is very well publicized. It happened because it's on a track, but many is economic uh, cases have uh, in, uh, in the financial institutions, in the economic cases, have been facing the same consequences, but Sonatrak, because as you just said in your, your report, that uh, more than 85% uh, of the Algerian economy is based on Sonatrak, that, that's why it has taken such a, a big uh, uh, concern with the media and other uh, 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 venues. Okay, Hamoud Salhi, um, some are suggesting, however, that the investigation might not have been uh, instigated by the government. Yeah, there are some reporters who are saying that, but I think Dr. Debeach is correct. Uh, this is not a single case. We've seen other cases, uh, the Postal Service, the Minister of uh, Transportation. So it's not unique. There is an attempt on the Algerian government to enforce due process. In fact, what is happening lately is unique, and it must be put in a context of Algeria fights against terrorism. As we know, in this context, Algeria began a process with the National Reconciliation, uh, Reconciliation that emphasized uh, amnesty, then it moved on on an all war uh, against terrorists, and that with a, prop a propaganda war against the cleric trying, or the jihadists, trying to take away the debate and making terrorism as an Islamic. This is another phase in looking at those who benefited from the, uh, the, de uh, the decades of uh, 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 terrorism. And in that context, it has significant, because there are power changes in Algeria. There 
there is a new generation that is sort of uh, uh, wondering uh, uh, what are all these riches, how people are getting richer and richer. But there is an attempt which is unique in Algeria these days, the fact that there is a process, an Algerian government trying to do that. Now, uh, who is benefiting from this, who is initiating on this, the government is certainly, and the president is certainly uh, on the top of this. But there is also a closer relationship between the military and the government. So in this case, what appears to be an attempt from the security, an attempt of, uh, uh, of the military to take over, is in fact w uh, done well within the parameters of what the National Reconciliation uh, has uh, uh, initiated in 1999. Okay, well, Akram Belkaid, um, if this is just another uh, case of corruption and it's following many other cases that have been brought uh, to, to the forefront over the past year, why is the Sunatra case causing such a shockwave in Algeria? Well, I think that it's uh, very obvious because Sunatra is, uh, uh, we may say, it's a state in, um, inside the, the state, the Algerian state. And it's the first time where we see this company being uh, under fire, being under uh, uh, the action of the military justice, be, be, being exposed to an investigation. For the people, it's, it's, it's not as if it was another company, another state company. It's Sonatrak. It's the wealth of the Algerians. So uh, witnessing this kind of, uh, of corruption case was quite a surprise in, uh, among the, uh, the, the, the public op the opinion in, in, in Algeria. Okay. Well, uh, Ismail Debaj, now, uh, some senior um, uh, officials of Sonatrak have been put under investigation, but there are some people in Algeria who are saying that that would be not enough if a real investigation uh, has to be carried out, and also suggesting that Sonatrak wouldn't be able to operate without guidance from the Energy Ministry, and so that investigation should be carried out also there. It's in the people who decide whether it's, uh, the, the investigation is, uh, is very well the, the, uh, led or not, because there is the, the consent institutions which will decide who oh, is innocent, innocent or guilty, that means the justice. So people have been put in custody. The chief executive is being investigated. So that's the uh, independency of the, of the justice. So but you say the, you the, say the, the independence of the justice. Of the I'm sorry to interrupt, but you say the independence of the justice. But I mean, this uh, investigation is being carried out by the military intelligence. It's not carried out by the police or the uh, gendarmerie or the judiciary, is it? Um, it has been carried out by the institutions concerned to bring evidences to the justice. And the justice is the only institution can prove someone is innocent or guilty without mentioning which which uh, which uh, uh, institutions because justice will use every element to bring all the uh, proofs that will uh, be against or for the accused people. Okay, so maybe Hamoud Salha, you could explain to us why is the military intelligence carrying on this investigation? Why is it not just a normal justice system? Well, I think it's, it's a very, very important question. And we seem to see a pattern here in the Algerian case. For example, the major project, the construction of the freeway from east to west, was given to a Chinese company. And it was given under the premise that the Algerian companies were, will not deliver the goods or there will be too much corruption used. And it was justified uh, because, from the official side and other sides, that the uh, national companies tend to overspend, tend to be corrupted. And it was best, for, from the Algerian perspective, to trust an outside company to do it, specifically the Chinese. And there is a pattern of this here. When we look at the major forces in Algeria, those who have bigger decisions or could, could deliver in that perspective, it is the military that will be able to do this. Now, the Justice Department has a say. It is uh, the sole representative of the law. It has, to, it has all the means to do that. But next to the military, the military is more powerful. Perhaps this is a sign that the government is serious about it, it's serious about 
are pursuing this to its fullest. Now, whether the military is fighting the, or is using this to uh, take power, that's another issue. But the issue here is the trust, and the government seems to be, or the presidency particularly, seems to be more at ease with assigning a function like this to an institution that is strong, that is known for its uh, uh, power in the country. And perhaps it's a good sign from the Algerian perspective that these people, uh, that the, 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 the matter is handled by those who can deliver. And as I said, uh, it could be uh, problematic because it sends the impression that this is a takeover of the military. And that's the risk, I think, the, uh, what Algeria will have to, or the government has to deal with. Now, Akram Belkaid, uh, some of, uh, some of uh, people in Algeria really look at this whole investigation or this whole scandal in a completely different way. Some people suggest that this is a power struggle going on between the ruling elite, uh, what they call the untouchables of the country, and the military. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, you, you're right, of course. Uh, I'd just like to, to go back for, for a second concerning the, 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 the point we, we've talking about right now. Um, you have to know that uh, in the late month, Algeria has uh, taken a bill that allows the secret services to investigate uh, corruption cases. This is very important. And concerning uh, Sonatrak, you have to understand, too, that it's uh, national security uh, subject. So this is maybe why the secret services were involved in the investigation. But of course, this is the other point of view which has to be uh, uh, taken seriously, which uh, says that uh, it's just a fight uh, inside the, what we call in Algeria le pouvoir, the power, and it's just a signal sent to, uh, from uh, a side to the, other, to the other one just to say, we have the capability to, to stop you. And the, uh, the thesis is that uh, the, uh, the signal is coming from uh, the military side towards the Algerian president saying that the balance that was existing these late years has not to change and that the uh, the the uh, maybe the intention of the president Abdelaziz Bouteflika to gain more power regarding the uh, actual power of the uh, uh, secret services was just an intention to be stopped and by this way this is why the signal was sent and this is why uh, Sonat Khak was uh, was investigated. And this is why also people are wondering why it's only the chief executive of Sonat Haq which has been arrested or being under uh, control, while we all know that in Algeria the uh, decision maker concerning the energy is not the chief executive but the minister of energy, Mr. Uh, Khalil. Well, uh, indeed, the military has been at the heart of Algeria's politics since the War of Independence in 1962. The National Liberation Front controlled the country for the next three decades until the so-called Black October in 1988. Thousands of disaffected young people fought government forces and hundreds were killed. After the uprising, a radical Islamist party emerged and came close to winning general elections in 1992. They were cancelled by the military, leading to, war, to years of civil war between the military and Islamists. In 1999, Abdelaziz Bouteflika became president with the backing of the army. He promised to end the violence. He declared an amnesty and released thousands of militants from prison. Although the country has enjoyed relative peace since, it has seen bombings by a group calling itself Al-Qaeda in the land of Islamic Maghreb. Couldn't it be that the military at some point is stepping in saying, telling President Bouteflika and his entourage there are some red lines, yes. you are not allowed to cross them? Of course. I mean, there, this is Algerian politics, as uh, uh, our friend from Paris said. Uh, the, the military is le pouvoir in Algeria, has the, has the power. There are some red lines. But I think the, the question is much better than that. Uh, there is, in fact, a debate within the military between the old sort of traditional officers who still view the military in the eyes or from the lenses of the Front National Liberation of the old days, and a new modernizing uh, 
uh, elite uh, military officers who are more open, who are, who are very critical of the uh, uh, politics, of the policies adopted by the say, state. And you see this in conferences in Algeria organized by the military, in mili among the military people. That kind of debate, I think, is very, very significant. And, at this, uh, and I think the, the military sees itself as being tarnished by this kind of corruptions. What is known in Algeria is, uh, is the fact that corruption is rampant. There is a new uh, class of nouveau rich, the new riches who are making fortunes, who are, who are doing much, much better. There is a wide gap between classes. Uh, the, for example, the, the average monthly salary of an Algerian uh, uh, allows only a person to uh, purchase power is like uh, probably uh, 10 kilograms of meat. That is very, very bad for a society, for a country that is very, very rich. And in, in a way, the military sees itself as being, as its reputation as being tarnished. Remember the, the military when it stepped in the 19, in the 1990s and, and was faced with the challenge of terrorism, the terrorist, it, it, it was the first time that it, it was directly involved in a conflict. The Algerian military always acts from the behind the scenes. And it seems like this corruption, this idea of the new riches people making wealth has uh, created an impression that there are, uh, uh, that the military is intentional. Uh, to my understanding, the, the, some of the people who, who are abusing or using the system or benefited from the decades of uh, terrorism uh, are, uh, are, are the target here. In other words, uh, the military can't afford being perceived as the cause of corruption. It has to do something. And perhaps this is the context why it's not only because Sonatrach is the strategic, it's one of the, um, it's the important uh, institution uh, in Algeria. It is Algeria Sonatrach, as we know. It's not just because, it's also it has to do with the fact that the military doesn't want to be seen as a cause of this corruption. And it, it, had, it opted to clean itself indirectly if you want. Okay, Akram Belkaid, a third th a theory says that maybe there is some power struggle going on within the government itself, that President Bouteflika would actually uh, change his legacy at this point, considering that corruption has been so rampant over the last 10 years, and that he is trying to clean up the scene around him. Yeah, yeah, and uh, of course it's, it's for him that would appear as something logical to do, because as our friend in Los Angeles said, uh, the dramatic change that has Algeria experience, experienced since uh, the end of the civil war is, is, is quite uh, uh, important. You know, many people are new riches, les nouveaux riches, as he said. Uh, money is everywhere, but the majority of the Algerians haven't seen that. They are still uh, poor people for a rich nation. So the, uh, a, the main goal today for the Algerian government is just to restore some kind of legitimacy and just to fight against uh, to against, uh, against corruption. Uh, the main thing to know, too, is that we have in Algeria a very important social unrest. We have strikes, we have people complaining about their, 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 the cost of life. Uh, the minimum wages in Algeria is just the equivalent of 150 euros, which is nothing to deal with knowing the, the cost of the life in, 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 in Algeria. So the, uh, logically, uh, the uh, target for any government now would would be to 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 fight against corruption. So this is why this uh, Sonatrach case is really interesting because everyone wa now is wondering: Is it the beginning of something new? Is it a kind of internal revolution inside le pouvoir in Algeria, or is it just uh, a, a, a game uh, behind the scene? And uh, what we can notice right now is that since this uh, case has been uh, uh, presented, we haven't heard about anything else. And there are many rumors in Algeria, many rumors concerning other companies, but till now... Okay, we have uh, Ismail Debesh back online, so I'd like to bring him back into the show. Now, uh, Assuming that this is uh, really the government going after corruption, how devastating is this scandal uh, for Algeria? No, before I, before I ask your question, I would like to emphasize, if we talk about the military, we should talk about state security institutions, that the law allows them 
to reinforce justice and the state of law, to help justice. That's how we should include the state, not to talk about directly about the military, because military itself doesn't have any uh, behind or reference to such a case. But the military security institutions, is, uh, which are uh, 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 legalized by the state laws to investigate and to enforce justice and the state of law. That's how we should include it. Not, uh, we, not we try to politicize it. If we do politicize it, we really we divert the, uh, the original issue, as you initiated in the beginning, that it's an issue of justice. The uh, what you say, what the impact will be? I think we we'll, uh, enforce the Algerian state, the Algerian uh, uh, justice. Uh, but what impact has, will it have on the economy? The no, I have to tell you, the indication of the independence of justice has already taken place. People are in custody. The chief executive is under investigation. This is an independence. So, and will give more uh, positive image to the president himself. The, what he promised to the people that everything will be open, including corruption. The economy of Algeria will be healthy because now we are on words of clearing all the defects that we suffered before, as my colleagues maybe mentioned some of them. So I think now the, the, uh, the Algeria's attractiveness and the investment will be strengthened and the, and, uh, uh, and the approach uh, by foreign companies and suppliers will be more positive when they see signs of justice, legality taking place as uh, not as many, uh, maybe foreigners before, uh, made some reserves about the bureaucratic bureaucrats which did not help them to do as much as they would do for their contracts. Okay, uh, Hamoud Salhi, do you see it the same way that Algeria would become more attractive for foreign investors? And then the second half of my question is, Algeria provides about 15 to 20 percent of Europe's gas and oil. Uh, do you see any ripple effect in Europe about on this scandal? No, uh, the, the second part of the question, definitely not. I think the, uh, this is a very, very important uh, issue to uh, Algeria. They would not, they would see to it, uh, every Algerian in the, in, in the office of the government, the military included, would not jeopardize any kind of relationship with Europe. Uh, now, the second part is very, very interesting, because on the one hand, we could see this is a good thing to Algeria. It due process being respected, and it's being implemented, and it's should carry out some positive. The positive is sending the impression that Algeria is, uh, uh, follows the due process, which is very important to any investor. But the risk, I think, is far bigger than that. Uh, it's the extent to which these attempts are, do, are done uh, tr with a transparency, with also a, a sense that this is a genuine attempt by the government to get rid of corruption. What is very, very interesting in this process is we are focusing on one of the major institutions in the country. It's on a track. If we go back in the 80s, it was this kind of policy or this kind of impression that led to dismantling of Sonatrack. Sonacom, as we know, uh, was one of the biggest uh, companies uh, in Algeria next to uh, uh, Sonatrack. It was dismantled to uh, small uh, uh, pieces or small companies, and it led to its destruction today, for example, those who works for Sonacom uh, are on strike, and it continues. I think they're still uh, on, the, on that strike. The obvious uh, problem here is how much of this is just Sonatrack, how much of it will, will lead to the dismantling of Sonatrack, because it's, be, it's been perceived as powerful. Okay, so Mr. If Salve, I'm sorry to with, interrupt, uh, it, it, but we did reach already the end of the program. It is an investigation that needs to be followed. So I'd like to thank our guest, Ismail Dabesh in Algiers, uh, Hamoud Salhi in Los Angeles and Akram Belkaid in Paris. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We always welcome your views and suggestions. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.